Welcome to You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker, a podcast to encourage and equip moms along their parenting journey. Join Sarah each week as she interviews dads and moms like you and discusses the joys, challenges, and rewards of raising kids. Hi, and welcome to this week's You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hamaker, and with me today, I have Alexandra Fung. She is the co-founder and CEO of Apparent.com, which is a website that makes it easy for parents to discover and share recommendations with one another about local things to do, places to go, people to see, products to try. Uh, she lives in the um, suburbs of Chicago with her husband and three kids, and we today we are going to talk about volunteering as a family. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here to talk about this wonderful topic. It is, and with summer right around the corner, I mean, this is a great time if we've never done volunteer work with your family to kind of, you know, take an opportunity, take a Saturday morning, or even if you're taking time off for a, a staycation, maybe, you know, to, to get out there and explore ways to volunteer as families. Absolutely. I think summertime is a perfect chance to explore this if it isn't something that you've already done. And I'm so glad we're talking about it because it if it is something that you've thought about but haven't, you know, delved into, you might not realize that it, it can be a little bit challenging. I um, mean, so I'd love for our conversation to provide resources and starting points for people who are interested in volunteering as a family, because not all places that accept volunteers accept volunteers um, that are younger and children. So, you know, we can talk about ways to find those because summer really is a wonderful time to, to try something new um, and maybe explore a new family activity. And maybe your kids will find something that will spark their interest. This could be the beginning of a lifelong commitment for them. So this is, yeah, this is a really great um, thing to do together. And I think before we dive into where to volunteer, let's talk a little bit, I think, about why families should volunteer together. I know in my family, as my listeners know, I have four children. Um, now they're between the ages of 10 and 16. And we often, I think we kind of started volunteering, doing some volunteer work as a family because of the way that it created this team feeling for us. And it, and it also helped us to think beyond the four walls of our family. I am a huge proponent of serving our family with chores and, you know, doing things, house things together, raking leaves together. Those are all great. But it's also good when to, you know, to kind of turn our attention outward, right, and to kind of look at the community together. So what are, you know, maybe share some of your thoughts on why volunteering as a family, you know, should be part of our, our what we do together as a family. Oh, absolutely. And I love how you started this conversation, Sarah, because it really should and does start with the family, right? So we begin as our family unit. Um, but as we get older, naturally, we begin to see that we are part of a larger community beyond our family, beyond our school, beyond the places that we visit day to day. And volunteering is a wonderful way to begin to introduce kids in a natural, safe way to this idea that there is something bigger than themselves. There's something more than their family, their immediate community, their friends, their school, um, and that they are part of something larger. And it's a great way for them to begin to get involved in their community, I have found that it's also led to some really great conversations about big topics with my kids. You know, if we're volunteering to pack food for children who may not have access to food, that sparks something in my children. Oh, you know, I, I did not realize that not all children can count on three meals a day and snacks like we do. Uh, and it's a wonderful way to begin to think with them and talk with them together as a family about these realities of the world that we're, li that we're living in. Um, and it's a great way for them to participate in their local communities and to begin to realize that people in their communities have very different experiences and opportunities than they do. So it's really a great practice for all of us, but something to share with our kids as early as we're able to. And also, I think it, it gives them an opportunity to see that they can make a difference, that, that, that their efforts in packing those meals, like for your example, you know, I mean, it really has an impact on, you know, kids their age 
or, you know, their community. And that's what I think that you sometimes is missing in our conversation about that is just that, that, you know, we can have that personal touch. Um, I love that um, our family does Operation Christmas Child. Mm-hmm. packing shoe boxes uh, for kids overseas. And um, I don't remember how many years ago, but uh, the, the organization off, uh, started this. You could track your shoe box and you, you pay a little extra to have put a special label on it, but you can kind of follow its journey from your hands to a child's hands. Now they, you know, they keep what secret needs to be secret so no no kids are harmed, you know, overseas or anything. But it's still very interesting to kind of see the journey it took, fun, when we packed it to where it ended up. And those things, I think, um, and I know a lot of organizations, um, especially ones that you kind of do things here, but then it goes um, across the country or overseas, are really helping to make those connections. Because <laughs> volunteering shouldn't just be about, oh, I'm putting in my hours, you know, so my, you know, I can check it off on my middle school or high <laughs> school, college, you know, I mean, it's it should be more than that. And I think volunteering as a family gives us that wonderful opportunity to make it personal and to help them broaden their horizons, like you said. Exactly. It really is a wonderful way to begin to not only expand your worldview and and to get a sense that you're a part of something bigger, but also to begin to develop those connections and and, and see those connections. I love that you're able to track that package, especially, you know, because there are great opportunities where you put things together that then get sent off, like you said. Um, But having that extra step of being able to see that it gets to a particular child just makes it so much more real. I mean, that's that's what we want. We want our children to understand that they are we live in an interconnected world um, and, and what that means and how even small steps like taking two hours on a Saturday morning to pack these packages can make a significant and positive impact on their larger community, on a particular child that needs that food package. Right. And it, and it just also helps us to, um, you know, because so many of us are, are blessed with, you know, we don't have to worry about where food comes, you know, where, you know, where our next meal comes from. And we don't have to worry about whether or not we'll have a gift on our birthday or um, those kind of things. So it really helps us to remember that, um, you know, to kind of count our blessings when we start having our first world problems whining, you know, <laughs> it helps us to remember not that we're trying to, you know, make ourselves feel better, but just to have that servant's heart. And I really think that the more we can help our kids and our family as a unit kind of have that wanting to serve others because we generally genuinely care about them yeah. um, and volunteering as a family is is so vital I think in cultivating that heart absolutely and it's a great way too if we're doing it as a family you know we're doing this and we're teaching our kids as we're doing it we're modeling what it means to care for others and to have empathy and um, be a part of this larger community so it's a wonderful way for us to teach by doing yes and um, and I know that and like you had said um, in the beginning of the show it can be hard to find things for the whole family to do, um, especially when you don't have teenagers. Once they hit like 14, 15, you know, the world opens up. I mean, there are a lot more opportunities. <laughs> but when they're younger, it can be challenging to find those that will allow, you know, a toddler through, um, you know, upper elementary school age kids to volunteer. Um, I'm going to share a couple of my favorites, um, and then I'm going to hear, I know that you have a lot of favorites, so um, <laughs> let, let me just start. I, I mentioned Operation Christmas Child. That's um, that's usually done in November, and they have packing facilities, and a lot of churches and other organizations get really involved in that, and that's a lot of fun because uh, you can pack specifically for the ages of your children. They have different age ranges, boys and girls, and they have a list of things that you can get. And a lot of it you can get at Dollar Tree and just inexpensive things to kind of um, help. And they really love picking up the different things and packing the boxes. That's always, that's a family favorite of ours and has been for many years. We also love doing Reese Across America in the, in December that's where you lay a wreath on the grave of a veteran, military veteran. And that, 
you know, is just so moving. We need to do more to connect our kids with the sacrifices others have made for our freedom. And that is one thing that we've really enjoyed doing. And it doesn't matter how old you are. (laughs) You know, anyone can do it. And that, and there's locations again all over the United States, um, to offer those opportunities. So those are two that we have really enjoyed. Uh, doing as well. Um, so let, let's hear from you. What are some of your favorite um, family volunteer opportunities? Absolutely. So one of my favorite places, and it was one of the first places that we found actually that allows us to volunteer as a family, because they take volunteers um, as young as five, is Feed My Starving Children. And I mentioned that one because not only you know do they have it here in the Chicago area where we live, but they have many locations around the country. So there's a greater likelihood that um, you might be able to find either a permanent site, they have several permanent sites around the country, but also they have these mobile pack events. Um, and you can even, if you wanted to uh, cr- create an opportunity for a mobile pack event, if you are able to gather enough people, I think they are um, able to accommodate that as well. So it's a more, um, it, it's a larger organization. Um, so there's maybe better opportunities to find uh, a, a volunteering with them um, around the country. So that's Feed My Starving Children. And it's a great, it's that great organization that I already mentioned where we packed food packages uh, for children around the world who may not have access to food, who might be suffering from malnutrition. And you spend two hours at their warehouse and they have created these meals that they can ship and they stay, you know, good um, across the transport and they are nutritionally dense. So they have the things that children need um, who may not, you know, if they might be suffering from malnutrition, this is just what they need um, to help them. And they get sent out to different countries around the world and you spend a couple of hours at the warehouse Then you begin by learning a little bit about the places that they serve and the communities are gonna, that are going to receive the packages. And you spend then most of the rest of the two hours actually putting these together. And it's a really fun time and they make it really enjoyable. Um, there are teams set up for packing. So depending on your team, it can be, you know, a little bit of a race, like, oh, let's see how many packages we can put together. And the kids really enjoy it. And again, you can volunteer with kids as young as five. So it's something that you can enjoy um, with your very young kids. You know, um, before you go on, I know you have some other uh resources for us. I, I wanted just to touch on what you said about the organization kind of giving you a little bit of the why before you do the how. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that that is so important because you just don't want to show up and start putting together food packages. Right. Or you just don't want to show up at the you know, pancake breakfast for the homeless and just start flipping pancakes. You do want to, I think, have some thought um, whether you prep your kids or whether the organization gives them some sense, you know, kind of put it in context. And I think that's so important to help our kids and even us have that. This is not another chore to check off, but here's why we're doing it, you know, because these kids are hungry. And here's, you know, some, you know, not always statistics, but I, a lot of them do such a good job Um of kind of giving you that quick little glimpse so that when you're packing the food packages or you're laying a wreath on a grave, you kind of have a better sense as to why. So I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, when you, when we go and look at these opportunities, kind of make sure that you have that why piece, because I think it really helps us develop those servant hearts. Yeah, and it goes back to what we were talking about, developing those connections. It's not just a task that you're completing like any other chore that you might do, you know, during the weekend or during the week, um, but it is actually something that you are doing for someone and, and why you are doing it is so important to understand it. And having this, you know, piece where you explain that and understand that before you are doing um, helps to make those connections. Um, another great organization that we found that we have here in Chicago, but I know they have at least a couple other uh, locations around the country is Cradles to Crayons. And again, this is another uh, organization where kids can come together to put packages together for other children. But this, rather than being food that gets sent out primarily internationally, I think the packages go more locally to kids who need things like their school backpacks or clothing for the school year. 
pencils, pens, all the things that any child needs to get them through the school year. And so your children and, and your family can participate in putting these packages together. And it can be a really fun opportunity for your child to be thinking about a particular child that they are collecting you know, all of these things for, whether it's, you know, their backpack and the supplies that they'll need for school or a winter coat to get them through the cold season. I love that. Those are great. And I know that in our area, there are other charities that do similar things. So, and I think your apparent.com um, is one of the reasons you started it was to create resources for um, uh volunteer opportunities. So can you talk a little bit about what your website kind of offers um, and how parents can use it to find those opportunities. Yes. So like I said at the very beginning of our conversation, it can be surprisingly difficult to find these opportunities. So I mentioned, you know, the two that I mentioned specifically are organiza- larger organizations that have locations in multiple places around the country. But what you're really going to want is to find places in your community that accept children. And in order to do that, uh, it's important to connect with others who are also interested in these things and um, who might be resources. So our goal with a parent was to create a space on the web or a website that gathers recommendations directly from parents in the community about any number of family-friendly topics. So, for example, we have a list of indoor playgrounds where you can spend a rainy day or the best outdoor play spaces um, as we are approaching summer. And one of the very first lists that we created was volunteer opportunities for children, exactly for the reasons that we've been talking about, because it isn't as easy to find. It is so important to rely on parent recommendations for finding these opportunities. So we start these lists. So we've created lists of family-friendly volunteer opportunities for 17 metropolitan areas around the United States, and we have several more in the works. And we you know, began these lists by adding all the places that we know about that take children um, as volunteers. And so I've learned about places, as I said, through my community, you know, people at churches, uh, scout troops, schools are often good places to look for ideas for volunteer opportunities, um, because these are often places that also will engage in volunteer activities um, for children. And so we've gathered many of these recommendations on a parent for 17 and growing local areas around the United States. And I would highly encourage people who are interested in volunteering with their kids to take a look, to check out upparent.com and see if we have a list created for your area to help you get your search off the ground, because it, it may not be so easy um, without you know these outside resources. Right. And, um, and just to, um, add on to that, there, I know that, um, like in where I live, um, there are, there are similar volunteer organizations that just gather volunteer information. Uh, so it's, if there's not an apparent, um, in your metro area, you know, like she says, school, churches, scouting groups, um, it, there can be ways. Ask other parents. Uh, <laughs> we're great sources of information. I'm always happy to share volunteer opportunities for kids. And ask your kids. You know, they are surprisingly good at figuring out what needs are in your community and even in your neighborhood. Look around. There are, you doesn't have to be a formal organization to volunteer. You can rake leaves for your elderly neighbor. You can help with, um, you know, free cat sitting services. Um, there's a lot of things that we can make a small impact for the greater good of our communities just by looking around us. I, I love that you're mentioning that because it's true. You know, it, and as we started the conversation, it begins in the family and you can, you, it only takes like looking outward just a bit <laughs> to begin to expand that circle of care. And so your neighbors are a great, you know, place to look to see if there are ways that you can help, um, in your very own neighborhood, um, in your school, your church communities. But again, uh, other organizations in your local community, like the Feed My Starving Children, um, or some of the places that we've been talking about. And I will mention too, even if a parent doesn't have a list created for your particular area, we have found that looking at 
opportunities available in other areas can also make it easier to find places um, in, in a new area because some of these places do work in different parts of the United States. So it could give you an idea for organizations that you might look at um, for your own local community. And what's great too, is that there are so many different interests that um, you can nurture through volunteering. So there are many different kinds of volunteer opportunities. So it's a way to also, you know, begin to expose your kids and maybe help them develop a new interest. If, if they love animals, for example, there are plenty of animal shelters uh, that take younger volunteers at least certain times during the month. Uh, and you can spend a morning caring for dogs or cats or any other animals that need extra care. And there are organizations that you know address poverty or hunger, like the Feed My Starving Children's. Um, and there are a lot of ecology-based organizations that can help promote environmental stewardship. So there are so many opportunities. So it's not only a great way to begin looking outside of yourself and serving your community, but also begin to develop um, your own personal interests or grow in your personal interests. Yeah, I love that. And we are out of time today. And I wish we could talk even more <laughs> about volunteer opportunities. So I encourage my listeners to check out um, her site, apparent.com. I'll list some of the resources we talked about as well in the notes for this podcast. And um, get out there and volunteer. That's the That's the best way. Just get out there and try something with your family this summer. So thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. You've been listening to You've Got This. I'm your host, Sarah Hammerker, and I am so glad you joined me. Today, we've been talking about volunteerism and families with Alexandra Fung. She's the co-founder and CEO of Apparent.com, which gives parents lots of resources for uh, things like volunteering and other, uh, other interests to parents. I hope you'll join me next week. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast of You've Got This with Sarah Hamaker. Sign up to receive notification of new podcasts and listen to previous editions at sarahhamaker.com. Until next time, remember, parenting might be hard sometimes, but don't worry, you've got this.